Hello and thank you for joining us for another segment of Supreme Feminine Essence, The Gifts You Were Born With. I'm Mia Sines, and with me this segment, which feels like many, many, is Patty Alfonso. <laughs> and I'll, I'll just briefly explain, because Patty is so amazing, I've interviewed her before several times, so it feels like she's just always here with me. So welcome, Patty. Thank you. Hello. Thank you for having me back. I really, really appreciate it. <laughs> you're, you're a fave, so we love to have you. Um, so you have um, amazing things to talk to us about. I want you to share your story and also about um, one of your new programs and also what you do. In addition to that, they all blend together so beautifully, and that's why we love Patty. So go ahead, Patty. Yeah. Um, sure. Well, the program that we are going to be talking about is Pole Dancing for Consciousness. And in my journey towards more consciousness, I've, I've done a lot of things, a lot of metaphysical, spiritual things. You know, I'm, I'm a healer, so I work with the chakras in the work field. And the two things that really, really created the most shift for me in my life and in my body were pole dancing and access consciousness. So in being in the question and, and asking, you know, how can I contribute to the world and to consciousness, these two things just kind of came together in a super, super magical way. Um, pole dancing as a way of really being with my body and embodying and honoring my sexualness and, and my femininity and then the tools of access consciousness to just clear away all of the limitations that were stopping me from creating when I came here to create. So it's been an amazing journey, an interesting journey, and I look forward to seeing what else is possible. <laughs> that's awesome. And I love that because that's... Um that's one of the many things that I've gotten from you is uh, what else is possible and return to sender if the energy yeah. doesn't belong to you. So, <laughs> so Patty often pops into my head when I'm, you know, like all of us, we have frustrating moments and we always have to work through our stuff. So thank yeah. you, Patty, for being with me. <laughs> my pleasure. You know, return to sender is really actually an amazing, an amazing tool. As an infinite being, we have the ability to perceive, know, and be everything around us. So we're always picking up, we're all just so much more psychic than we give ourselves credit to. Yeah. And we're always picking up other people's thoughts, feelings, and emotions. And then we make them ours, and then we start to try to process them, and what's wrong with me, and what's going on, when really, if you could just ask, is this even mine? and then return it to sender. I mean, how does it get any easier than that? And I use that tool a lot. <laughs> it's very, very helpful. It really is. It's awesome. And I actually, that tool was really useful for me in creating Pole Dancing for Consciousness because there is so much, so much judgment and so many conclusions that are around pole dancing and what it is and who does it and what it creates. And to really step into the world and say, hey, we can use this tool for consciousness, like the pole is magic and what can it open up in you and in me? That tool has been invaluable. Even just like posting a picture on Facebook and then perceiving everyone's judgments about the picture and then like, I just, it's in, like, in my body here, and I'm like, ugh, and I'm like, oh, wait, who does that belong to? Oh, yeah. yeah. I love pole dancing, and pole dancing is awesome, and, yeah. you know, pocket and pot all of your judgments. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's amazing, and I'm glad you brought that up, because um, it's just, part of it is our culture, you know, being a puritanical country, and, and obviously that's how our families are raised, who raised us, and the thought process, and society and all that so it's awesome that you brought that up because there are so many women I'm sure and write us and tell us that would love to know about pole dancing belly dancing uh, lap dancing for their mates but they're just too afraid to admit it and to to express their feminine beauty there's nothing more powerful than being in that essence of I'm a queen and I'm gonna show it to you you know I mean seriously Yes, and I love that you said the word power. There is so much power and potency in really embodying what your feminine essence is, whatever it is that that means to you. If we, if we sort of look back on history, on what has been done to women who were in their power and in their potency, whether it's 
you know, witches and all of all of that sort of historical piece that that has has occurred, mm -hmm. then what is it that that our culture has done to women to sort of you know, I have to say we have a part in it too. Um, you know, I choose, I chose for a long time to sort of down my femininity because everyone else around me was uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, in my nurturing, how can I take care of you? How can I help you? Well, I was like, well, oh, you're uncomfortable. Let me, let me, let me just tune myself down a little bit to make you comfortable. Yeah. What does that serve? That you know, help I love that you said that because I'm, I've been thinking lately, I've been using this wooden chair from my dining room as my desk chair because when I do these interviews and use the office chair that I used to use, my breasts show. And I remember getting written last year in November by somebody who was watching a summit, you have big boobs and what are you trying to do, have sex with everybody? And I was like, oh my God, you know? And so I had to really <laughs> tone myself down when actually it's really a God-given gift of what I have, just like everybody else's. They have their own gifts, you know? And, and I love my and I'm glad this is a woman's summit, not just. And we love seeing them. <laughs> Thank you. And why would you hide them just because that one person had a terrible judgment? So exactly. It's imagine the gift, right? So that this is like this is really awesome. So the gift that you be, right? You are you're in your chair and your breasts are showing, and that brings up a judgment in someone else. Mm -hmm. So what can we do to clear that judgment? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Whoa. Wow, everything that is, we destroy and uncreate it. Right, wrong, good and bad, pock and pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. As we step into our greatness, it is going to bring up stuff in other people. Mm -hmm. And that stuff is their stuff mm -hmm. that is coming up to be cleared. Yeah. It's just that time. Right. You know, so please, I mean, if you, if it feels good to you and you're doing it for you because you're beautiful and you, you know, our buddy, our buddies, that's my dog, our bodies, <laughs> they love to be lusted after. My body is so happy when men or women choose to look at me and be like, wow, you know, my body really, really enjoys that. It's a gift to my body. Yes. So everything that that brings up, mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> destroy, yeah. no, create it, right, wrong, good, and bad, pop and pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds, because it's just, it's just time for everyone to step into their greatness, whatever it is that that looks like yeah. for them. And I've really been, since um, I took your pole dancing for consciousness a couple weeks ago, that was really great, I've really been working on these thoughts that are not mine return to sender and every day I do this body scanning meditation where I see the body that I know I can have you know um, I love my body now but I want to love her more and so I do this med this um, meditation scan and I also just always return the thoughts that keep coming in and you know it's amazing the the closer we get to conquering our um, to getting to the other side of an issue or a problem the more it wants to jump up in our face to stop yeah. us and then we just constantly keep going after it so that's a, a tip too is don't not just on this but anything consciously that you're working on yeah don't retreat because um yeah. because it's uncomfortable once we get through yeah. the uncomfort it's it's amazing yeah you know consciousness includes everything mm -hmm. access sort of describes consciousness as everything without judgment. That's everything. And consciousness isn't always comfortable. But if we could just be in that space, then right on the other side mm -hmm. is so much more freedom, so much more joy and, and happiness. Mm -hmm. If we would just kind of get through that little piece of, of discomfort you know like I said when I would post some pictures on Facebook of, of my pole dancing there was that space of uh, wow this is really uncomfortable and becoming aware okay I'm perceiving everyone else's judgments whether they're good or bad judgments and who does that belong to return to sender and coming back to what I know what do I know about pole dancing what do I know about consciousness what do I know about what it could create in the world mm -hmm. and I've just plucked that from consciousness and I have to just keep sort of reminding myself and coming back to that space that magic that lightness yeah. of what I think is possible mm -hmm. and what else is possible beyond that that I'm not even aware of in this moment right. <laughs> it's really beautiful it is yeah. you jumped in before I uh, you were talking before I mentioned about my wooden chair 
<laughs> instead of my ghost chair. We were talking about, um, well, let me ask you this question because we were on this train of thought that I think is so great, is um, women turning down their energy to fit into other expectations, others' expectations of us. So um, I know we're still on the same topic. So, And you've shared. Can you share a little bit more, and then we'll go on to our next question. Yeah, I think that that women and men, let's just throw it in there as well, um, everyone's projections and expectations on us of what it is that they require from us. Um, that's a way in which we start sort of shifting and changing to fit into someone else's mold of what they think that we should be. And also, just like, you know, with the, what you were talking about, your breast showing, and really just like stepping into what it is that is true for you. Whether or not somebody else is going to have a judgment about it or not. If we try to fit in to some little box, everybody loses. Everybody loses. You're not being you and the people around you don't get to enjoy the magic of you. So really, I mean, it's really just about really getting to know you and, and being you as the infinite being that you are and returning to sender all that stuff that doesn't work, asking what else is possible, asking how does it get better than this, and then really, really stepping into the brightness that you are because that is a contribution to the world. Yeah. Trying to fit in and trying to change yourself for other people is not a contribution to anyone. And it's so interesting how we are sort of programmed to do that and to be that in this reality. It's like the weirdest, it's the weirdest thing. I mean, if you think about like when you get into a relationship, how much of you are you cutting off to fit into that relationship, to fit in with the other person, to fit into their reality? Is that really working for you? And what else is possible? Mm -hmm. Can you find a relationship that's an equal contribution to both parties, where you both get to be and do whatever it is that you are, right. without judgment, without cutting off certain pieces of yourself? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, imagine we would all be so much happier. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. So let's talk about the energy of sexualness. I actually have a quote because I, I just, this is, yeah. Um, you can find this in Dr. Dane Kier's book, uh, Embodiment, the manual you should have been given when you were born. But this is, he just says it so beautifully, I really wanted to get it right on. So sexualness, mind you, it's not sexuality or sex or any of the other words. Sexualness is the honoring, the nurturing, the acknowledging, the caring and the healing of the universe. It's the expansiveness, the creativity, and the gratitude. Embodying the sexualness of you allows everything else to show up in your life. Mm -hmm. I mean, wow. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Honoring, nurturing, acknowledging, caring, healing, mm -hmm. all of that, of the universe, of you, of me. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. The energy of sexualness is probably the yummiest energy that I have ever sort of played with mm -hmm. and encountered um, when you sort of not sort of when you come into the presence of someone who is really embodying their sexualness for me like my whole body just relaxes mm -hmm. and all of my barriers go down and my body just kind of melts into the moment mm -hmm. and it's so healing so caring and what would it take for all of us to embody that energy with ourselves and with each other. That's lovely. Let's talk about the possibility of sexualness in men. Well, we all have it. There's no possibility. Like, what else is possible, right? Can you imagine, imagine making love, right? Let's just use those words. Making love with a man who is embodying those energies. Mm -hmm honoring your body, mm -hmm. nurturing your body, mm -hmm. acknowledging your body and your being, caring, mm -hmm. healing. Like, what would that be like? Pretty effing awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're both in that space of honoring each other and, like, nurturing each other, what can be created and, and what can be part of the healing of the universe is absolutely magical. I mean, as a woman, your body just 
melts into the moment and the orgasmic energy that's created is <sighs> yeah yeah that's beautiful and what invitation can women be to men to recognize that energy within themselves so as you as a woman really choose to embody that what invitation can you be to the men in your life you know it's like to to just like touch someone like mm -hmm. gently arresting like really yeah. feeling your skin really feeling the energy in your fingertips i love i love that, that. yeah that's, <laughs> that's absolutely what i'm with when i when i'm with my mate whichever you know now i'm married but before you know whomever i was with it was absolutely that it was cherishing and honoring their being because they're magnificent there's no, for me, that's the most fun and enjoyable moment in the world is when you can show another person that you care deeply for how magnificent they are. And I'm not talking about buying them cookies or making them cookies. I'm talking about our most fragile, delicate system, our, our human body, to, mm -hmm. to share and be gentle and yeah. it's magnificent. Try it, ladies. <laughs> the energy, like, it, whoever, if you're watching right now, if you could perceive the energy right now that Mia and I are holding, the expansive in that energy, the expansiveness, imagine an orgasm from this place mm -hmm. rather than, you know, that sort of thing that <laughs> right. sometimes people do. So, like, the total relaxation of your body and the complete openness and expansiveness, like that kind of orgasmic energy, that is full body universal, you know. You'll let everybody around you know. <laughs> That's when you feel the highest connection to the divine in a, in a sensual form is, yeah. in, is in that time when you're, when you're working on this and doing this. It's, it's beautiful, it really is. I'm glad you brought that up, you know, because it's, it's amazing. Let's talk about being in the question about your feminine reality. Mm. What is what is your feminine reality? What does it look like to you? That's the question that I would pose for everyone that's watching because there is no right or wrong in in anything. I mean, I, we're, access we're we're really holding the space for the elimination and the eradication of polarity. So there is no right or wrong. What works for you? What is your feminine reality? For me, you know, it's putting on some makeup and sauntering down the street with my hips sort of having that little <laughs> wiggle. For me, yeah. it has, for me it's it's putting on a beautiful dress and honoring my body and my figure and for me it's the softness of the energy sexualness um, dancing for me is is part of my feminine reality pole dancing obviously part of my feminine reality and then also really embodying my potency as a woman and the energy that I can use to create in this reality mm -hmm. to change this reality women are <laughs> we are the change makers of this world I've been to a lot of metaphysical classes and spiritual classes and even access and the majority of the people that are in those classes are women mm -hmm. why because we have the drive to change the world mm -hmm. we are the ones that are like all right what else is possible here so that's a huge part of me embodying my feminine um, essence mm -hmm. is holding the candle for that change um, what else it's so much more fun to, to embody <laughs> <laughs> what what excites you, what stimulates you to be in that element as much of the time that you can be because out of that comes amazing creation for for work, for family, for friends, for progressing further as a yeah. as a spirit being on this planet, you know, living in our human body. Yeah. And for me as well, you know, for a long time uh I 
I really had the sense, or I thought, let's just say I thought that part of my feminine reality was to be in relationship and get married and have kids. And that's really changed for me a lot in the last few years. I sort of became aware that it, you know, I used to watch a lot of like Leave It to Beaver when I was younger and yes. <laughs> Father Knows Best and <laughs> all those, exactly. you know lovely shows but then I just started having the awareness is like is that really what am I am I really going to be really happy at home you know cooking and cleaning and for a long time I thought that I was but that all changed for me and again moving away from the polarity because if that is what works for you then all power to you wow I totally admire you but I just started becoming aware that that wasn't really what worked for me and I'm just going to say it again, moving away from polarity, there is no right or wrong. What is your feminine reality? And what would it take for you to create that in your life? And anything that doesn't allow that, destroy and uncreate it, right, wrong, good and bad, pock and pot, all nine, shorts, boys and beyonds, whatever it is, choose it, be it. Choice creates awareness. Have fun, you know, have fun. What if the purpose of feminine reality was to have fun? <laughs> and I love that you, you keep coming back to the non-judgment because this is such a judgmental, or can be with some people, such a judgmental um, topic, conversation. Uh, and why? And why? And why? Ladies, why? Do you want to feel fabulous or do you want to still live with this thing over you that you can't express your incredible beauty? Every single one of us has this amazing beauty because it comes from within and shines out. Yeah. And when we identify with that and get in touch, exactly what Patty's talking about, her pole dancing for consciousness is amazing because what it does is it helps us understand that our spirit being with our human body and the essence blending together. So it's nothing, and if you wanted to be trashy, naughty, dirty, whatever, great, good for I you. Know. And, <laughs> and, let's not, and let's not judge each other. Let's support each other as sisters because... Consciousness is everything without judgment. Yes. Everything. Yes. Naughty, sweet, classy, slutty, all of it. <laughs> all of it. What, how does it get back to that? You know, and I, I really like what you were mentioning about um, the body and as we receive judgments from people sometimes they can get locked into our body and that's really one of the gifts I think of pole dancing is first of all the body movement but just to really be um, in communion with your body and allowing your body to move however it is that it chooses to move really unlocks a lot of the stuff, stuff that we have locked in there yeah. um, that keeps us sort of stiff and 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 straight oh it's like so uncomfortable like what would it be like to just you know, yeah move? you know I, I just thought of um i could hear these like voices in my head as you were talking and it reminded me of like when you're a child and you're told don't do that don't yeah. do that you look ridiculous. You're putting on a bad appearance. Don't do that. Can, can, yeah. yeah. Does that freak you guys out? The way my tone was because because don't lift your skirt. Cross uh -huh. your legs. Or exactly. go, go do this. <laughs> but our happiest times when we weren't told that was when we were children and could actually just be, just yeah. be who we want to be. So. It's interesting how at a certain age all of that kind of changes. You know, when you're like one, two, three, four, it's cute. It's judged. Everything's adorable and everything is cute. But then once you start kind of growing up a little bit, eight, nine, ten, and then especially once you start puberty, then all of the rules and regulations come. What if we didn't have any of those rules and regulations? What if that sexualness, because kids have an amazing, like we come into this world with an amazing amount of sexualness that throughout your life experiences starts getting shut down and cut off. Mm -hmm. So what would it be like if that didn't happen? Mm -hmm. If we just allowed people to just be everything that they are, if that exuberance of life could carry through into adulthood and everything, how much freaking fun could we have, you know? Yeah, exactly, exactly. I, I love the idea constantly and always will is to absolutely, like you were saying, get rid of the judgment, don't allow it in because it just... It, energy. it does. <laughs> and and for those of, of you who aren't energy people and don't understand it yet, it cuts off your feelings. It cuts off who you are. You know, that's what our energy is, is, is our true essence. 
and there's a flow. So, yeah, pretty amazing. So let, let it flow. <laughs> let it flow, baby. So let's talk um, a little bit more about pole dancing for consciousness, what it's like, because I'd love the entire world to do your program. Huh, I would love great. it too. Well, Thank actually, you. let's talk about that, because I did do that with yes. um, a bunch of other girls, so women, and... Um, it was amazing. We were all in Patty's studio, and um, she, you had us for how many hours? Like five or six, right? It was yeah. great. It, it was, was so fun with that day. It was probably one of the most enlightening experiences I had. I had started doing some belly dancing stuff before, just on, you know, watching it on the internet and, and doing stretches and stuff. And so when I got to Patty, when I got to Patty's, I, well, when I left Patty's, I was like, wow, she's worked every single muscle and yeah. more. Yeah. And um, I was just very impressed with that for probably the week as I felt my body <laughs> for a whole week. It was amazing. It was amazing to support other women as we are doing our movements and cherishing our own body and... It was brilliant because there has to be trust, there has to be love, there has to be compassion, there has to be no judgments. Because who can actually be themselves doing moves, uh, moving your hips, exercising, because it is an exercise, I mean it's fantastic, that's why we do it, it feels good. Um, who could actually do all that if they're going to be judged, you know? Well I think, you know, this is actually... Thank you for bringing that up because this is exactly part of, I think, why the program has sort of come into existence through me, um, is because there can be a lot of judgment. Like, mm -hmm. women were not very kind to each other. And why? Because our moms weren't. Yeah, mm -hmm. and to hold the space, so like, even if the judgment does come up, that's the whole point of bringing in the access tools, is to clear away those those judgments that come up. Not only judgments of other women, but the judgments that we hold of ourselves and our bodies, those parts of our bodies that maybe we don't like so much, or we wish that were different. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, it's a really beautiful space, a safe space space and place for all of those things to come up and the women that are showing up are like oh, I'm ready I'm ready to let all this shit go yeah. I'm ready to really be with myself and to really have appreciation for the people around me um, and I think that the pole is such a magical contribution to that whenever I talk to people about pole or women you know men too men have a slightly different um, reaction. Which I uh, I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. But when when I chat with women about it, their bodies, their bodies light up, and they're just like, oh, I want to try that. Mm -hmm. So what would it take for you to give yourself the permission to try whatever it is that your body would like to try, mm -hmm. even if it is pole dancing? I mean, I think that my parents are probably freaking out a little bit. <laughs> from beyond, oh my gosh, you know, um, and that's okay, because those are their points of view, and they're not my point of view, I have a completely different reality when it comes to pole dancing and what it can create, um, and and the sense in your body, I mean, you, you tell me, Mia, what was it like in your body after the class, what was it like at home after your class? <laughs> I, felt, I felt for more than a week. Um, I felt very um, in my body as a woman, very sensual, very seductive when I wanted to be, very empowered, very beautiful. Um, I want. I keep telling my husband, let's get rid of the dining room table and put a pole in the dining room. <laughs> so we're going to see if that happens. <laughs> I'm like, we can have a folding table with a beautiful tablecloth. Let's just do that for when people come. You know, we can put up a table anytime we want. So, and and you know, what's really funny is when I first brought this up about wanting a pole. I knew Patty had a pole. We're actually neighbors too. So, um, I knew Patty had a pole, and um, I've seen it from being in her place, you know, exciting, woohoo, and my husband said to me, are you trying to be like Patty, what would Patty say, and I said, which is funny, because as an awakening coach, you wouldn't think you'd do that, and I said, I don't care what Patty says, Patty would love it, 
Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you love it if I wanted it and had it? You would love um, it. You would cherish it. Please me. have a poll yes. in your house. <laughs> what would it take to create that? What would that contribute to you and to your life? And why would I have a judgment around that? Exactly. Why would I want to prevent you from adding something to your life that mm-hmm. would enhance it? Yes. This is where, like, competition, Which you know, not that you and I are doing it, yeah. but this is what he was inferring to. The competition between women. What is that? And can we please fucking stop doing that? Exactly. Because it's not helping anyone. It like really, really drives me a little bit crazy. Me too. There is no competition. Please, mm-hmm. please add whatever it is that you need to add exactly. to your life. I totally support it. Because when you are like full on you and I am full on me, the changes that we can make in this world, the contributions of consciousness that we can be, will be beyond anything we could have created if we were competing with each other. So all the competition that women are doing with each other for men, seriously, can we please stop doing that, okay? For exactly. men, free attention, for anything, can we just destroy and uncreate it? Right, wrong, good and bad, pock and pot online, shorts, boys and beyonds, because it sucks. It sucks. It's it so does. uncomfortable. And it's so not fun. And it's so not creating anything in the world. <laughs> and what's even better is when you can be out with your man or in a group of men and women and point out somebody and say, isn't she beautiful? Yeah. And mean it from your heart. And even go up to the lady and say, you look fantastic tonight. Yeah. I've done that more times than I can count because, one, I'm impressed when I see another beautiful woman. I'm just like a man where I want to see beauty. And it makes her feel good when you say to her, you are real. And coming from a woman, there's not a threat. So when you go to a woman and say, you look just so beautiful in that dress. Or your face, your just yeah. lights up. Look at that smile. And what contribution, what contribution is that beauty to you? Mm-hmm. You know, like you said, as you can, if you can really just allow yourself to flow with that energy, receive the energy of the beautiful woman, give some energy back, how much more of a contribution is that rather than, oh, oh, who does she think she is? Hey, what is she wearing that for? Yeah. Like, which one is lighter, people? Come on. Exactly. Come on. It's time to start choosing. And choosing meanness and competition I think there's an article about that. <laughs> you, you should, because there's something that's very important about the sisterhood, and it's something that I've been talking a lot about in the last year is, is through the support and love of each other. We have something together that men can't give us, mm-hmm. and we love men, but men can't give us. And when you have that support from another female, they know what it's like to, even if they haven't birthed children, they know what it's like that connection within their body for creation. They know what it's like to go through any situation probably that you've gone through. They know what it's like to not have a relationship work out and you have children or whatever. You know, we can support each other so much through love that it's unbelievable. So embrace the sisterhood, ladies. Yeah. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm sort of becoming aware of this energy. Um, well, not this energy. We've been talking about it, but that flow of energy that I was talking about and this sort of support that you're saying, what is that? Is that the sexualness energy, the honoring, the nurturing, the acknowledging, the caring, the healing of the universe? Mm -hmm. There is no competition in that energy. There is no like, I'm better than you are, you're better than me. There's no envy, there's no jealousy. It's just nurturing and caring. And that is a contribution that we can be and that we can embody. Um, so, yeah, thank you for that awareness of, awesome. wow. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I love to, um, to just have my sisters with me. It's beautiful. Share with us your free gift, please. Yes. Yes. Um, you can go to PoleDancingForConsciousness.com. I have a free video series about pole dancing for consciousness. I talk about, you know, the body. I'm going to show you a few moves that you can do at home to sort of start helping you to unlock your body. And then I, I have a whole video series on it that, you know, is based a lot on what we talked about today and a lot of cool, juicy tidbits and tools to use to, you know bring more consciousness into the world. That is really what I'm here to do, and and I thank you for giving me the opportunity to do that. So, PoleDancingForConsciousness.com. 
That's awesome. And it'll also be in your daily flyers. You know, go back to your email and 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 the link to get to Patty's free gift is there. Thank and you. also Patty's credits along with mine are on at the end, just like all the videos that you've seen so far. So this has been totally awesome. Before you go, um, I would like you to leave us with one, two, three, an amazing thought. <gasps> an amazing thought. Um, how about an amazing question? Okay. Hmm. What would it take for you to step into your greatness today? And anything that doesn't allow that, will you destroy and uncreate it? Right, wrong, good and bad, pock and pod, all nine, shorts, boys and beyonds. What would it be like for you to truly perceive, know and be the infinite being that you truly be? And what could you create in your life if you allowed yourself to step into that space. And anything that doesn't allow that, will you destroy and create it? Right, wrong, good, and bad, pock and pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. I love it. As Shit. you said, we can, I love how you said we can destroy it and recreate it. That's uncreate it. We want to oh, destroy uncreate. it and uncreate the limitations that uncreate. we have. Uncreate. I thought you meant, and I thought you meant recreate our greatness, which no, no, is no, already there. And uncreate anything that doesn't allow all of that to show up in your life. Right. That's really, really awesome. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Patty. It's really been a lot of fun. You're always fun. Thank you. And there's a lot of good information here, and you're just a shining light. And I just thank you so much. love to have you around. So thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> thank you, Mia. Thank you. And we'll see you all in another segment. Bye.